There you go. Water. Yeah. She was standing in a bucket of water. We'll tell you the story later. Yeah. It's a good story. Thanks, Eric. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad I know, and I know that you'll remember it. I will. Yeah. So, yeah. So, power session two is all about your database. Uh, we'll be check checking in on how you did yesterday. We yesterday was about your value proposition, and we want to know that everybody has a solid start on their value proposition. If it's not e if it's not already even done, that it should be very close to that now. And today, as we talk about your database, the, the key elements of your database are going to be that the the laws of the database is is here make it happen. Build a database. That's just not going to work for me, is it? <laughs> Build your database. Because I don't use the clicker, I use my mouse. Build a database, feed it every day, communicate in a systematic way, and service all the leads that come in from your database. And um, as we work through this, let's just get going. If this was the other direction, you'd be able to see that we are on Tuesday. Number two, your database. And then for the rest of the week, we'll be doing open house prospecting. And then on Friday, we'll be doing a check-in appointment. The check-in appointment is typically only going to be about half of the two-hour session. So be prepared at the end of the week to have done what you're supposed to do on a daily basis. So right now here, stop and do. The focus of Ignite is to consistently be communicating and adding 10 people to your database on a daily basis to be connecting with 10 people on a daily basis, and to follow up with written notes uh, or emails on a daily basis, and to preview 10 homes a week. So who wants to share it with me? How did you do yesterday? How, would you, how do you score yourself for what you accomplished yesterday? I scored myself about a five to six trending in the upward movement. <laughs> That's good, I like trending upward. How about you, Jerry? I did, uh, I'm, I'm adding, I'm, instead of adding the database, I'm trying to fine-tune mine. I've got 2,000 names in there. I'm adding them as they come in, but mm -hmm. I need to concentrate on, I'm making sure that they're complete. So how can you make what you're doing in your database fit the parameters here? How can you redefine that for yourself? And I do have some ideas for you, but... Well, I, I need to refine at least 10 people in my database. Okay, make, make so, sure so if you're yeah. refining... If you're refining 10 people in your database, then you can be connecting with those people as well. Mm -hmm. And you can be following up with those people as well. Right. So as long as you are consistently working 10 people a day in your database, in the, these three aspects of uh, adding, adding maybe missing information or updating information for them, then that would qualify and connecting with them in the first place. So don't just look at them in your database and look up in the yellow pages, but actually reach out to them and connect to them. And then uh, writing them a follow-up note, thanking them and asking them for referrals. So is that is that a commitment that you've made? Is that what I'm hearing? I'm, I'm in the commitment. I'm, I'm, I've got a Almost a check mark yet, but not. Is it almost still a check still, mark. Still so, in, so in is it is it highly possible that tomorrow when we come in that you'll have a whole check mark for let's, today for tomorrow? Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's a cool commitment. Uh, now, it's, now it's reported. So are you on that? Are you on that too, Eric? Is that the page that you're on too? Tomorrow when you come in, you're going to have a ten in all those areas. Yeah, probably except for the preview of ten homes in the week. Well, and that the yeah the, the first three is what we're talking mm -hmm. about for the ten to yeah, the ten. Yeah, oh for sure. And then yeah. and then within a whole week we'll eventually see ten homes. I actually like the venue of being able to reach out with handwritten notes because it's so an unused mm -hmm. trade anymore mm -hmm. for the most part. And so there's mm -hmm. different options as far as okay. Thinking. And how how about you, Kyle? About four yesterday. Four yesterday. Yeah. Okay. So what would what would you have needed to do yesterday different in order to get to ten? Maybe not be so focused on doing our videos. Better time blocking. <laughs> better, better, better time blocking would would be uh -huh. would be it. I think it's yeah. Yeah, and I and I for myself, I'm discovering that I'm becoming an expert at time blocking, and what I must work on now is the discipline of working the time I have blocked, the way I blocked it, mm -hmm. and not allow myself to give permission to do something different than what that time was blocked to do. So my morning is my lead generating time, and when I'm in 
class and teaching class, then I have my whole week blocked out in the afternoon to do my lead, lead generating. My lead generating. It's legal now, so it's okay. It's what? It's, it's legal. legal. It's legal. It's legal. It's legal. It's legal. Oh. Uh, what? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, so everybody has uh, goals for tomorrow, so that's cool moving forward. How about, uh, has anybody got appointments scheduled, agreements signed, contracts written, and contracts closed yesterday? Uh, yes, I held two uh, appointments yesterday. Oh, and I also had two appointments, and we started a new listing, nice. which goes active today. And we signed around a contract. Awesome. So we're working on that. And okay. And the rest of the room is signed. I wrote a contract yesterday. I'm Excellent. Thank you. Don't be shy. It's okay. I have and, a tour set for tomorrow. And you, you excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I, you're always working. And I love your black and red motif. Too. Thanks. That really looks cool. Okay. So we want to get our heads in the game. The goal is for you to build a database that will produce leads and that your customers, and for your customers, that the personal and informative communications you send them will make them feel that they are among your most valued clients. So whatever that, however that means to you. And I really love this, this thing, let's read this together by Tony DeCello. Uh, you want to go out loud, uh, ready, set. Just how, how valuable is a database? For Tony Costello, director of KW Maps Coaching, Austin, Texas, it's worth millions of dollars. For seven years in a row, Tony closed 100 contracts that originated from his database of 1,100 names. He communicated with his database 30 to 35 times each year, which consisted of two mailings and one phone call every month. At an average of 5,000 over closing, he received about 500,000 in annual commissions each year, totaling approximately 3.5 million over seven years. Tony continues to be perplexed by the number of agents who do not have a database. The two top excuses he hears is that it takes too much time to get organized and it's too expensive. He explained, explained that when you work really your database, work the database well, well, it's, it's the, the foundation, foundation of your business. business. You, you don't, don't even need money. You can email everything, newsletters and videos. There are no excuses and nothing should get in your way of using this powerful and tool. essential money-making tool. <laughs> so we all paraphrase a little bit. Sure. Excellent. So we are on building and working a database to bring you leads and appointments and get you to close. So this chart here is going to be part of each of our sessions. It shows us where we're at. Uh, we're at leads, come to appointments that follow up or layer in the sessions to agreements and contracts and closings and dollars in your pocket. So today's action plan is learning the power of the four laws of lead generation and putting them into action. Feed your database with METs and haven't METs. Do some real play and call and send handwritten notes to people in your database and set up touch campaigns for systematic communication. Real play is starting, will start discussions using social me media and classify and qualify your leads. So gear up. What we need to have available today is you've got to have your database, you've got to have your cell phone. For each of the sessions you do, you've got to have your database, you've got to have your cell phone, you need to have at least 10 note cards, envelopes, and stamps, 10 business cards in your value proposition from session one, rev up. Is everybody ready? Why do I hate those things? It's very honest of you to admit that. So, do you have your phone with you? I do. Oh, by golly. I'm so glad you said you didn't have your database with you today. No, I'm talking stamps, envelopes, letters. No, my database goes everywhere with me. Okay, so so your phone, that that list of people that's in your phone is your great is your, is a great first step for having a, a, a quality database. And if all you did was start at the letter A and work through your phone list as a new agent, and then as you work with those people, get them into the system that you've been provided because you're part of Keller Williams, 
then you'll be miles ahead of everybody else. Sir, in, yes. In, in reviewing the materials last night, I looked at my phone just to see how many contacts I had on my phone versus my mm -hmm. database. 2,703 names in my phone. 2,000 in your database. Yeah. I had no, I had no idea I had that. And I wonder, I wonder who's in your phone, mm -hmm. maybe, that isn't in your database, and who's in your database that isn't in your phone. Yeah. That would be pretty phenomenal. So yeah. based on that, if you go back to what Tony DeSello said, mm -hmm. how many, you've got, you've got almost twice as many as Tony DeSello had, and he's generating 500,000 a year. Yeah, rub it in. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Gary. <laughs> So let's yep. stand up because yep. here's our affirmation of the day. Because this is what it's all about for all of Ignite. Every day in every way. Ready, set. I, I add, add 10, 10 people, people to my, my database, database every day, day and, and I, I do, do it with ease. ease. Perfect. So, have, has everybody in here, you're all old school. You're all old, old, old people. You've been with Keller Williams for a while is what I mean. Um, Everybody's activated their eEdge accounts, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can move beyond that part. If you haven't activated your eEdge accounts, you need to do so because your eEdge account, which only costs you $15 a month as part of your monthly fee of $49.50, uh, your eEdge account is, where, is the beginning point of being a professional at the highest level possible. So, your eEdge account allows leads to come into you, to go into your My Contacts, to go into My Marketing seamlessly, and then to seamlessly go into My Transactions. So, it's very important that you have your eEdge account activated. And if you need any help with that, you need to please reach out to anybody in the office, and especially Jolene, because she's the master of the eEdge uh, tools and setup. Uh, but anybody, any, any one of us is willing to help you out that's been around for a while and understands it. So we've said this three, two times already. We're going to say it again. The four laws of lead generation are build a database, feed it every day, communicate with it in a systematic way, and service all the leads that come your way. So number one, build a database. We've already talked about the fact that, that you've got systems built and, and what we're using is market leader. You may be using top producer. It doesn't matter. Um, I don't want to ignore the people on this side of the room. I just realized I was doing that. I'm sorry. I apologize. They're very quiet. <laughs> they are very quiet over there. Um, but, you know, I, I, I apologize. That, that won't happen again. Um, so, habit mints. Database is divided into mets and habit mints. So, who has an idea of what a habit mint is? Habit mint is someone you haven't met. Good answer. I don't think you can get much better than that. He's a team leader. So where might, yeah, that's, yeah, excellent, excellent. So where might a habit met come from that's in your database? Networking events, grocery stores, anywhere you meet or come in contact with people. A that's habit it? met. That's in my database already? It's in your database. That was a good try. The, uh, the other uh, eight, um, buyers or sellers in a transaction that aren't mine, but they're in my database. I haven't met them yet. I'm the listing agent. The buyers oh. are in my database. I haven't yeah. met them yet, but they're yeah. in there, and I haven't met so them. So how are you going to manage those people? That's a great answer. That's not even the one I was thinking about, but I love that Try answer. to stay ahead of the, yeah. the, the instructor as much yeah. as you can. Yeah. So, so, um, so people who are part of a co-op deal and you represent one side and everybody who's on the other side are people that you haven't met yet. So how are you going to deal with that? When would you deal with that person? After closing. Absolutely perfect. Because after closing, if you have captured the email address for that person, you can start dripping on them. And then hopefully they'll still be a habit met, but hopefully at some point they will reach out and they will say, hey, I know someone who wants to sell a home and since you sold us ours, they will have potentially forgotten all about who their agent was because their agent may not be dripping on them the way that you are. Then the, so is that a great idea? Yeah. Now what, what we also know is that, that your farm can go into your database. And those people that you are communicating with on a farm basis are people that you haven't met. So, so 
you what the goal for a habit net is that eventually you convert them into a met. So so by feeding it every day and doing your ten uh, appointments a day, uh, not even appointments, but ten contacts a day, so that you're communicating with people on a regular basis and expanding the sphere of people that you're communicating with by 10 on a regular basis or re-communicating with people by 10 on a regular basis when you have a large database uh, and, not a, and not missing any opportunities to continue to add to your database, then you eventually have some of those habit mets will convert into pe people that now you have met. And your mets is really, I think, the answer that you gave me for having yeah. nets. The, so networking events, where yeah. you'll, you're going to have a blend of people where, where you've met them, and they may not know you enough to do business with you, but because they, you have met them, now you can communicate with them on a higher level. So as, as a group activity of what you do within your database is your habit nets, you want to be communicating with I'm scrolling through to look for what I'm looking for. Uh, your habit mate mets you want to be communicating with once a month. And then when they finally reach back to you, or they acknowledge you and they interact with you, then you convert them in your database to a met. And then you want to communicate with them the way Tony DeSello was, that 33 to 35 times a year. So does that make sense to everybody? Okay, mm -hmm. great. So when you are new to the real estate business, the best first thing you have is who do you already know that knows you, that likes you, that appreciates you, um, and, and will talk to you on the phone and that you are comfortable talking to on the telephone. So everyone already has a core group of people that knows them, trusts them, and is willing to open up and talk to them on the telephone. So, so what you want to do as a brand new agent is you want to introduce that you have joined the real estate industry, and this next section is a perfect script for you to introduce yourself. So Eric, do you want to read this one for us? Yeah. Hello, this is Eric Krem, and this is a business call. Do you have a moment? I'd like to share some exciting news with you. I've become a real estate agent and have joined as a partner with Keller Williams Realty South Sound. Now you may be thinking, wow, he or she's brand new, and I may not want to work with someone so new. Yet with Keller Williams and our partnership, I have all their knowledge helping and supporting me. Plus, my clients get all my enthusiasm and hard work. And as you already know, I'll do whatever it takes to help people. So of all the people I thought about connecting with, I knew you would be someone to help get me get my career started. May I count on you? Great. So I wanted to ask you, so I, I wanted to ask you who you might know from work, your neighborhood, or a group you belong to who's interested in buying a home, selling a home, or investing in real estate. Can you think of anyone right now? Thanks for taking a moment to think about it. Also, I have a wealth of interesting and timely information about the real estate market in our area. May I go ahead and send you something about the market from time to time? Can I have your mailing address, possibly an email address, or are you on Facebook or Google? Thank you for your time, and please let me know if there's anything I can ever do for you or anyone you know. Does that sound like a script that you could use? Well, for sure. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a break for uh, five minutes, and I want you to uh, build your call sheet for yourself for who you're going to call today, and then I want you to go and make some phone calls. So take a, take give yourself five minutes to build your call sheet. Jerry's already got his with him. Good job, Jerry. And then ten minutes of calls. Okay. Are we back? Yeah. All right. Who wants to tell me how many phone calls did you make? Let's report. I made how many calls? I made how many connections? I got how many referrals? And I got how many appointments? I made two calls. Two calls. Spoke to two people. Uh -huh. I've confirmed uh, one of the people going to Seller Mastery cool. next week and potentially another one that will come out of that as Excellent. well. Excellent. So, okay. So? The other guy had the flu. I had one, made one call. One call? Yeah. Great. I left a message. Great. So what went right in your calls? 
getting a hold of them. Having them pick up the phone. Yeah. Okay. What what were the what was the challenge? What were any of your challenges in the call that you made? Calls that you made. My own perception of whether rejecting or you know they don't want anything to do with what I'm talking to them about. Mm -hmm. uh, just my own mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, where did that? Where do you think that comes from? Where did that mindset come from? Just from past experiences and uh -huh. things that have gone on. That so maybe what in bold they talk about um, deciding how other people are going to react based on what's going on in your own mind. Yeah. That's the paraphrased version of it. So yeah. yeah, so you have to get out of your he own head and not try to jump to how they're going to respond to you. Mm -hmm. and just make the calls and let them have their own response instead of you giving them the response and not making the call and saying, well, I didn't call them because they would have just said no anyway. Right. That's a challenge. Well, Mike? What would help you get beyond that? And well, you get I, struggle through that? Years ago, it was ingrained in me that the, the key to time management is knowing what to do next. I spend way too much time trying to decide what to do next. So it's a top Ooh. priority. Ooh. So I spent the first part of this last session trying to say, who should I call? Who would be the most mm -hmm. priority to call instead of just calling? So what if you broke your list down into sections and didn't allow yourself to say, well, skip that one and mm -hmm. let's go to this one because mm -hmm. this one might be more receptive or let me go a couple pages? What if you portioned out created a discipline, we're going to focus on discipline, what if you created for yourself the discipline of this is the way I will reach out to my database, whether it's I start with the Z's or I start with the A's or that I work from the top to the bottom and I do, I do as many calls as I need to on a daily basis to reach this many people and that I don't allow myself to skip anybody. And I do allow myself permission to scrub people, which means delete them from your database, so that what you're working with is always the most current, and people that are excited to hear from you, and and you have no problems with, because we're independent contractors, so if, if there's somebody that needs to be scrubbed, because every time you've called them for the last three times you've called them, you've gotten off the phone and gone, oh, jeez, that was, that was really not fun. Well, maybe you don't need to work with that person. Maybe you should be scrubbing them off of the list. Or if you if you don't have a phone number and you don't have an email that works and you haven't been able to track it down, scrub them off the list. So that the list becomes, and then, then as you go through your list in time, I think you'll be able to hone in on who the core group of people are that are the ones that are bringing you most of your repeat business. Mm -hmm. Who the affiliates are that are the most productive for you. Yeah, for sure. See, I, I, I know that. Okay. But so we're back to doing it. So I did. I Here's my okay. highlighted. These are the ones I should be calling. Instead of just, you know, why did I leave out Betty and Earl and Orb and Mona? And yeah, Nicole? why did you leave out the people that aren't yeah. highlighted? And then I the ones that are highlighted, I'm prioritizing them. I spent a lot of time prioritizing them. Getting ready to get ready? Yeah, yeah. So what would happen if you got rid of the highlighted mm -hmm. list? Mm -hmm. Take the staple out and recopy it because mm -hmm. it's yellow and it won't show right. up if you copy it again. Or start with a new list, which you've already got because you're already thinking along that line, aren't you? Yep. yep. Yeah. So s stop categorizing mm -hmm. and just make yep. the call. Just do it. Yeah. Just do it. So if, if you will hold me accountable for that, I will help hold you accountable for that. Hold you accountable for what? For doing the same exact thing. Oh. Because... I'm not standing up here telling you that I'm perfect in mm -hmm. all of these things. Yeah. I'm standing up here telling you that I struggle with the same things that everybody else struggles with. Yeah. The voice in the head that you have mm -hmm. to get over mm -hmm. and all of all of that. My pair of shoes have come in for me so yeah. I don't have to be barefoot anymore <laughs> while mine dry. And, and what drives that? Because every woman has at least one pair of flip flops in her car so that when she decides that it's time to get her toes done yeah. or a pedicure, oh. she doesn't have to put her feet back into shoes that are going to destroy the paint. <laughs> I'm with you. Are you? Yeah. Why your shoes are wet? My sh she stepped in a bucket. Okay, this, here's the story. Yeah, I'm, I'm, because I'm, I'm, there should be a story in all things, and that's just my style anyway. 
So last night I get a call from one of my past clients who I'm doing a for sale by owner transaction for. She's the, she's the owner of the property. The property is derelict. It was all trashed out. It's got fences all the way around it. Her son had padlocked all the gates shut, and I have a set of keys. The guy across the street owns a grocery store, and he watches the property for the son who lives in Seattle. And he called the son last night, so I got the call from the son's mom. And, and Velva says, Susan, there's deer on the property. The guy at the grocery store says, there's deer on the property. And I'm thinking, you know, I've been home for an hour. I had a drink. And I'm thinking, well, I'll charge. No, I won't, because I don't ever go anywhere after I've had a, a drink in the evening. I just don't believe in drinking and driving. So I said, well, uh, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I can't drive. I can't offer you that. I will. That is so funny, Velva. I will, I will drive by there on my way to, to the office in the morning, and I will see if there's deer in there. And, you know, I imagine if they got over the fence, they probably know how to get back over it to leave. But I'll check, and she says, don't, you know, don't hurt yourself, because deer can be dangerous. And I says, well, I'll be very careful. Maybe I'll just look from outside. So I get there this morning, and I open the gate, and I walk into the property, and the guy across the store, at the store, I talked to him first, and he said, well, it looks like they're gone, but I think that back gate is open. So I thought, okay, great, great. So I go in, and I walk through the property. The further I get into the property, it's about a half acre. The, the longer the grass gets, and it's all wet with morning dew. So I get halfway through, and I can see the deer bedded down here and the deer bedded down over here, and yes, indeed, the gate is open. And I'm thinking, I'm already soggy, and I don't have anything to lock the gate up with, so let me just leave now before I really get much, much more wet. So my pants have dried out, but my shoes are still wet. And when so. Eric asked me why my shoes were well, I told him that I was trying to form fit them to my feet, so I had stood in a bucket of water this morning, and I was That's letting them dry in place. Oh, okay. I almost bought into it. I like, yeah. <laughs> I like the deer story better. Yeah, the deer story is good. So the, the activities, I think we're always so worried about the, the outcome yeah, of absolutely. what someone's going to think, and so I think if we just, myself, I just have to focus on the activities and the results will come. And what drives home the concept of not spending a lot of time prioritizing who to call is looking at the hot sheet and seeing past clients or customers show up with somebody else. Oh, right. A buyer. Right. We've all done that. Mm -hmm. I've kept in touch with the, with my listing, but not the buyers. Seven years ago, they bought my listing and they found the market with somebody else. Yeah, so we have to get out of our own heads and start deciding how other people are going to react to us and just have a conversation. Try to reach them. If you don't reach them or if they are nasty to you, you know, or if you or if you decide when you get old, you need to work with people that, that you like and respect and who like and respect you. So if you call somebody and, and you don't feel warm and fuzzy when you're done, um, I will give them another shot because maybe you got them on a bad day. And if you got that a couple times in a row, I'd be inclined to scrub people. Or if you don't have current contact information, scrub it. Start it over again. You know, spend a couple minutes trying to find it, but don't, don't use your call time looking for their contact information to reach out to them. Use your call time to systematically work through your list of people and call until you reach people to talk to until you've reached 10 people a day. That's the whole focus. People get really worried about the, um, some people will get really worried when they start at night, when they start looking at 10, 10, 10, that's 30 people. No, it's not 30 people. It's 10 people that you did three things with. Yeah. It's just 10 people. So, if, if you took a day and you counted the number of times you were on the telephone, you're probably on the telephone more than 10 times a day. And yeah. each of those people is an opportunity for you to say, you know, I don't think you're in my database. Would you mind if I stayed in touch with you and put you in, your, in my database? Oh, great. Can I get your contact information? Yeah. You know, hey, you know, have, do you think about the people that you talk to on a regular basis, whether it's a lender, an affiliate, whatever, whatever it is, or a prospect or someone that called you on the phone because you've got a listing, 
hallelujah, and the sign is making the phone ring for you. And every one of those people that calls you is your opportunity to be a professional realtor and to guide them into giving you permission, if it's not to meet with you personally, to say, you know, I have an awesome database that has an interactive tool on it that will allow you to set up your own search. And you know the cool thing about what Keller Williams does on these, on these databases is that it will only show you properties that are active on the market. So you don't have to worry about when you're looking on another site that may have lots of listings on it, that sometimes those listings are already under contract or already sold because the material's out of date. So I would love to, may I add you to my database and then I'll send you a link so that you can go in and play with that interactive system. It's, it's, it's really cool. So everybody that you talk to, Send notes to your map. One of the tools we use is to write, write, take a group of thank you notes, and when you're doing open house or you have quiet time in the evening, the kids are already in bed, um, take, have a pen, a set of pens that's all the same. Write, start your notes out so that when you meet somebody and you want a quick note, all you have to do is take that same pen because you've got your little note kit. Take that same pen and address the envelope and on the inside of the note card say, Hey, John, it was great to meet you at Open House today. And the next paragraph is stock, and it's already got your signature on it. So you can, and then throw in a business card. That's why you need to have 10 note cards, 10 business cards with your business uh, minimum every, every time you come to a night class because we're going to be doing these calls every single session. So make it, take advantage of it. Yeah. So I will tell you that what you should focus on is before at night starts at 9, or whenever you're listening to this tape, before Ignite, it, Ignite starts each day, you should build your list that you're going to call from. You should have all your materials ready. You could have even started your, fo your phone calls because class time is going to give you about 10 minute break to do that. So during the class session, you won't have time to get through your whole list and get your 10 contacts. Um, but you will have opportunity to prep yourself before class to be ready to make all those calls and then immediately after class to finish all of your calls would be a best practice for everybody. So please get into that habit for yourself because you're here because you wanted to grow a professional real estate practice. And our goal is to show you the model of how to do that. So the next, the next so we're talking about people you already know and let's read through, Jerry, do you want to do this one? Uh, calling a referral, because if, you, if you're not new to real estate and you're just trying to ignite your business, here's a great script to use for calling a referral. Hi, Bill. My name is Jerry Obendorf. You don't know me. Your name was given to me by a close friend of both of, of, both of ours. That was uh, Eric. And uh, he said that I should be giving you a call right, call. Is right now a good time to talk for a couple of minutes? Excellent. So, how do you know Eric, just out of curiosity? Well, he said that I am to take good care of you with all of your real estate needs. He said you were thinking about selling your property in a couple of months and asked if I would please give you a call. Because at a weak moment, you might end up with a weak agent. He and I both want to make certain that you are in good hands and that you have the very best. So, that's why I'm calling. Have you seen anything you like thus far? And if they're selling. When are you planning to move? Have you signed anything with another agent? Excellent. The best thing we can do is get together and have you come to my office. That way we can start from there and I can tell you the way I work, the expectations you can have of me, how the entire process works, and that will take about 20 minutes. Perfect. Does that seem like a pretty easy script to use? And it's so yes. true. What, do you see any pitfalls with that script? Do you want to change that script? Would you be inclined to want to change that script? No, I would expect when they, if they already have. Well, they may yes, but they sign with another agent. Right. No, but I've talked to other agents. Excellent. Or, so, so okay. Yeah. So, so if the answer was different than no, I'm not. So, mm -hmm. 
So go ahead and let's try role playing on that, and we'll see where we can get with it. Have you signed with another agent yet? So have you signed with another agent yet? I'll be I'll be the agent. Okay. Uh, have you signed with another agent yet? No, but I'm going to sign up with Jim next week probably. Oh, that's great. That's excellent. Then before you do that, you know you don't know oh Jim anything, and you don't know no. You don't owe Jim anything, and you don't owe me anything, but you do owe yourself the opportunity to know that you've made the best decision possible. I would love to interview you for the job to sell your home and to have an opportunity to share with you why so many of my clients decide to use me as their realtor for life. When can we get together so that we can talk about the way I work? Um, how about next Thursday morning? Excellent. You know, I have time uh, in the in the morning at eight, and then I do have some more time afternoon time. I thought I'd be at work before eight. Could, could we meet for breakfast someplace at six thirty? Sure, you bet. I love that because that leaves me free to do the rest of my morning that I usually cool. do. Great. Okay. So, so there's a way to get you through that. And later on in the Ignite series, there will be some objection handlers that will guide you in how to learn when to insert what when people are talking to you and giving you the feedback. But one of the key areas is that in every question you ask, no matter what the answer is, your answer is always a positive. Excellent. That's great. Even if they're telling you, I don't ever want you to call me again. Oh, that's excellent. That's great. That's good to know. Then then would you mind? I won't I promise I won't call you uh, would it be okay if I called you if someone was interested in buying your home? Well, that would be different, yeah. Then I would want you to call me. So you don't really mean you don't ever want me to call you again, is that right? Well, yeah, that's that's really right. Just, I promise I won't harass you. How's that for you? And I would love to, if I have an opportunity, if I'm working with someone who's interested in your house is for sale by owner, okay? If I'm working with someone who, who is interested in a home, and I know that your home is a good fit, to have permission to just give you a call and find out if at that time you are still interested in getting your home sold. Will that work for you? That's fine. Okay, great. Click. So, okay, cool. Chris Heller, mega agent and president of Worldwide from San Diego, California, understands the power of a handwritten note. To this day, Chris communicates systematically with his entire database using the 33 touch and each of his 2,400 contracts receives between two and three handwritten notes a year, which means Chris sends an average of 25 notes a day. Wow. Zowie. So, Amazing. and your database is pretty much that same size. Mm -hmm. You know, Chris has been in this business for a long time, and his database is 2,400. Wouldn't you think that his database would start getting bigger? Why do you suppose it doesn't? Attrition through the database. Attrition through the database? Yeah, people are, you know, either moving out or not interested or whatever. Or he's scrubbing it, yeah. maybe? So the 2400 is the highly effective people he has in the database? He may have a huge core group of people that are in his net database. That's all he needs. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty phenomenal. So, so, brand new agents, stop and write yourself a press release. Complete the following activity. This is going to take 20 minutes, and because everybody's doing this on video, we'll expect you to stop the video and do this at home. So the goal of this, and you can find everything that we're going through today on mykw.kw.com. Log into the dashboard system for yourself, and then click on Education and KW University, and then click on Ignite in the left-hand column, and when the Ignite screen opens, across the bottom there will be a list of tabs, and one of them is the, is the toolbox, and you can find lots of supporting material for all of the class sessions there. And in the top of the, of the screen, there will be a button that says Student Manual. And when you click on Student Manual, you can open up and download any one of the sessions yourself and go through them from start to finish or or however you choose to, but that's what we have up on the screen today. Session two is about 45 pages long. Um, so so on, on this page, which is going to be page 13 in, to, in session two, it has the, the information on how to write a press release. And here is 
an amazing little bit of information. That here's an example of a press release. So if you've just joined Keller Williams, uh, you, we would love to have you present us with a press release that we can optimize out into the real estate community for you. And then you can also put that stuff together and use it in your so own social marketing, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, however you go. And there's a blank piece of paper here in the session, so if you, those of you who have binders in the room, we don't have any new agents in the room today, so, so we are not going to take a break and, and do a press release today because everybody in the room has already released to the world that they are part of Keller Williams. Uh, the third law of, is communicate in a systematic way. So um, Ben Kinney is pretty phenomenal. Um, he developed and followed the 10-day of pain conversion method for their internet leads. There is a social marketing system that Ben Kinney put together, uh, which is pretty, is pretty powerful if you buy into it and you operate it according to the model. That's the whole focus with all of the programs that you'll see in Keller Williams, is that if there's a model for each of them, and when you follow the model, then you have extraordinary success. The disclaimer is, if you don't follow the model, then don't complain that you didn't get extraordinary success, because the model is created so that you can follow it and have extraordinary success. So it requires that commitment. Be systematic, he says, about making regular contact with everyone in your database, all of your METs, so that you are the first person they think of when they think of real estate. In the sales industry I came out of, we were taught, and it has followed through every sales profession I've ever been part of, that it takes six to eight connections to, grow, to buy mind share. So when, in, when I was in uh, outside advertising, we, we sold that you've got, to be, you've got to be in there monthly in order to get mind share. So that when they, they may not take action with you right now because they're not ready, but when you put people on a 33 touch, it, the simplest step is the 33 touch by email, which means that, that 33 times a year an email is going to come out from you and go into your Met database. And what that does is it gives them a, an opportunity on a regular basis to have you top of mind. So that's at least two emails a month, which is going to make you top of mind and buy mind share in, this, in the eyes of your Met database. And when you communicate with them regularly, they are more likely to think of you when the need arises and they have a referral. The strength that you have uh, in communication and what we're trying to teach you today in communication is that nothing will replace also picking up the phone or getting face to face with them and solidifying exactly who you are. Because the, you can send them 33 emails in, in 12 months and unless you are also picking up the phone or getting face to face with them, you will not have purchased enough mind share for the model to have operated for you at the optimal level. So it needs to be a combination of activities and those note cards so that they really do begin to think of no one else but you when they have a real estate need of their own or when they have a friend or family member that says, hey, I'm thinking about buying a house, and they'll automatically say, you need to call Jerry. You need to call Kyle. You need to call Matt and Naya. You need to call this person because this is the person that is an expert. And you'll find that you'll have people that, that you'll get into communication with that you might not even remember who they are, and what they will say to you is, oh, yeah, I, I see your stuff all the time. I know exactly who you are. You have built a relationship with them because you are sending them information and communicating with them on a regular basis, and you may just be getting to know them at a higher level yourself, but they feel that they've known you for a long time. So th that is done by the Top of Mind campaigns is the, the two-touch system. So when you first meet someone, you get to know them, you want to communicate with them eight times in eight weeks. So once a week for eight weeks. It's called an eight by eight. And then after they've completed their eight by eight, then they go on to a 33 touch. Don't do an eight by eight and a 33 to save yourself time because then you will have inundated them and they will go, oh my gosh, where's all this stuff coming from? And they'll and they'll then they'll tell you to stop. They'll unsubscribe from your from your from your system. So you don't want that to happen. So you want to sl start slowly, once a week, 
which may seem fast, but it's really at a slower pace, once a week, very productively, and then move into the 33 touch. So you're building that mind share with those six to eight impressions that are required up front, and then you are getting them into a, a mode of, of seeing you consistently. So a series, an eight by eight, we just all talked about that, a series of eight touches in eight weeks and a 33 touch to connect with and nurture your relationships with the Mets who have finished an eight by eight campaign. So within the Ignite system is the way to build an eight by eight and a 33 touch. So you can see here what that looks like uh, and it's, it's pretty elementary, and there is a way in here to build an 8x8, but I would highly recommend the Keller Williams agents go to your dashboard and click on Market Leader and go and evaluate and check out the 8x8 campaigns, the 33 Touch campaigns, all of the campaigns that have already been created with you and Kellerized, and then pick the one that speaks to you the most and tweak it and personalize it if you choose to to give it a little bit of voice and get started because it's already been built for you, they're already colorized. And this just talks about how you might define your own 33 touch. So this is what you're going to find in your eEdge marketing materials. You're going to find that when you open up an 8x8 campaign that it's going to be an editable system so you can you can, if you decided you didn't want to call them this time, you wanted to call them so there, there, there's a way to edit the contact points and change it and tweak it and give yourself directions on what you're going to do when you get there. And this even has the scripts for, that you're going to use when you call your people. So if you use your eEdge marketing materials and you set it up, then it's going to send you the task list of what you're going to do that day and what the script is going to be that you're going to be using for each individual that you're communicating with. So it's all automated with the eEdge program. So there is an opportunity every other Tuesday here at the Market Center is Tech Tuesday, and you can come in and Jolene teaches us more and more how to use all of these systems that are in the eEdge system so that you can leverage them and take advantage of their ability to free you up to have more time to focus on growing your business and getting those 10 contacts a day in that you need because it's kind of like those little toaster ovens, you set it and forget it, but the focus is up front, deciding which campaign you're going to use and then getting it set and then moving on and then focusing on your lead generating and Jolene will teach you how all of that works and comes together through the eEdge system. A note on social media. The best way to engage with a quality database is through social media. When you're active in your online networks, you are in touch with your sphere. If you're like most people and use social media every day, you can think of it as a 365 touch system. Here are some ways that you can interact with your sphere and position yourself to be top of mind. So scan your news feeds daily. Is there a friend who would appreciate you reaching out to them right now based on their uh, update? Or post your own updates that are a mix of professional and personal news and actively encourage thoughtful responses. The more provocative your update, the richer the discussion. You know, I sat on my couch last night, and it was probably that drink. <laughs> <laughs> and I started a new group. And I didn't start the group until after I had posed a question on Facebook. I said, um, what, what, <laughs> I can't remember how I put it. But Jody Hill Kosser down in, at, at Realty World in mm -hmm. Chehalis made some comment and someone posted something on awesome women in real estate and for some reason the word strange popped into my head. So I posted, would anyone join a group called strange women in real estate? And about three people said, well that sounds really interesting. So I started a group last night titled strange women in real estate and I create group focuses and they were all wonderful folk, I thought, yeah. great, you know, come from contribution, servant leader, and, uh, in, you know, doing the right thing for your clients, and everything being win-win. So there wasn't anything really strange about it, but it, I was amazed at the number of people that hit on it in one evening and looked at it. So it was, it was within about 15 minutes, 24 people have looked at it. That's, 
Uh, I, I was just having this wild idea. There's a lot of strange women out there. I can tell. <laughs> and, and I think I might have invited two men, and Jerry, I think you might be one of them. <laughs> I qualify. I qualify. I can't remember who the other man was, though, but I know, I th I'm pretty sure Jerry was one of them. Thank you. So you just never know. So starting a discussion on social media, that was actually quite fun last night, and that's because my husband was home late. He got three hours of overtime, so I'm home, fed the dogs, fed myself, sitting on the couch, watching the lake, and playing on Facebook, and it was it was fun. Good. So he came home, and I'm sitting on the couch laughing, and I says, I just feel like I went out to lunch with the girls. Yeah. It was awesome. The 24 of them. Yeah, yeah. So now you've got, and you're communicating with them, so now when a lead comes in, you need to service it. So, so we know statistically that the person who gets the business is going to be the one that reacts the fastest to the lead when it comes in. So don't think that just because they've come in, it's like, oh, goody, I have a lead. Oh, goody, I have a lead. Oh, great. Here, let me go to lunch. So it has to be, react to it and do something with it now. Now, the value of your E-Edge system is that when a lead comes in, if you do nothing, the system is going to do something on your behalf and send out two or three emails, invite them to uh, sign up for alerts, and, and send a message from you. So my practice is that when a lead comes in, I will go in and I will click on email, and I will send them an email and say, hey, this is Susan Draper. I just want you to know there is a human being on the other side of all of this, and I would love to help you if you, if you have any immediate questions or if I can give you any guidance in your, in your path to, to in, in the journey that you've just started, however, however that and I've got, I've created a stock email template for myself to use that I can personalize the first part of it. If I've spoken to them on the telephone, then I'll tweak it up a little bit. If they haven't lived, left me a phone number, then I always shoot them that personalized email. Um, but you have the ability to go in and create template emails that are your voice speaking instead of the system. And you can go in and edit the stock emails that are in there in the system so that it's more your voice speaking to them when they get the first notifications from you. Um, so, so when you receive a lead, the action steps are to contact them, classify and qualify them, and then set them up on a campaign. So when you receive a lead and you've contacted them, now they qualify to go on an 8x8, and then you can set up your 33 Touch to start on a specific date. So you don't have to go back and remember to do that. You just want to make sure that you don't set them up to start all at the same time. So you can, you can sequence it out for yourself so that that will work for you. Um, so best practice is going to be, and Jolene will support this for you, best practice is going to be when you first reach them and you classify them and you save all of your information. Say you've talked to them on the telephone, they've shared a little bit more information with you, and then as soon as you save all of that information, scroll to the bottom of the contact list and put them into a group that they qualify for. So you were able to reach them, so now they are a met. If you were unable to reach them, they are a haven't met. There's another category for a haven't met. A lead that comes in that is protecting their privacy, hasn't given you a phone number, and you haven't gotten a response by email. So they go into a haven't met. A haven't met gets dripped on 12 times a year. So maybe you add them to your monthly market report, which is 12 times a year. The monthly market report is part of a 33 touch. So if they go from being a, a haven't met and now they've become a met and they're communicating with you, you're going to change them off of the 12 direct campaign and just delete that campaign and say, okay, now, now they're in my, have, my met group of people. And Jolene, again, will go into way great detail on this whole process and how it works. Uh, I'm moving them into my net group of people, and I'm going to start them not on an 8x8 at this time because they've been getting communication from me. Now I'm going to just put them into a 33 touch. So just be concrete and sequential about how you do it, and you'll find that you never lose anything. Classify and qualifying, that's what we were just talking about. So you can set up any kind of groups you want to. I've got a group of uh, uh, out of area realtors, uh, KW local, KW worldwide. So that if I'm looking for someone for a referral, I've got a whole group of realtors I can go to. I keep them 
say oh. separately because they don't want to get an email from me that says, I'm, are you ready to buy or sell a home? Because they're in the business. That, but I have, there's a special campaigns in there that you can, you, you can subdivide all of your people and you can set them up, even though they're in your Mets and your Habit Mets, you can have all kinds of other groups that you've got them classified, like family. These are my kinfolk, whatever it is. You can do anything you want to do. And qualified. So you're going to buy it. Someone calls you on the telephone. So you're looking to buy a home? What are you wanting to move by? Have you been pre-approved by a lender? And then you can decide whether they're hot, active, or inactive. So where are you going to put them? Or if you didn't reach them when they're a lead that comes in, if you didn't reach them because uh, maybe they haven't given you a phone number, then they go into the re retry category. So when you go into work your leads, you can just click on show me everybody who's retry. And today I'm going to focus on just trying to reach out to the retries. So classifying, qualifying. Many buyers yeah, have life do. issues. So the pathway to home ownership is usually about two years long. So when you meet a buyer, Many times they're not ready to take action yet, but they will be ready to take action once they've gotten through some of their hurdles. So that's why it's important to ask them, uh, have you been pre-qualified? No, we don't think we can get qualified. You know, we have this going on, this going on. Um, so, you know, it, it might be a good idea for you to just get connected with, with um, one of my favorite lenders. Um, I'll give you a list of three if you'd like to, and you can call and interview them. I have found uh, that other buyers have discovered that didn't think they were qualified, that they actually were qualified and only had a couple more hurdles that they needed to jump through. And that many times the best starting point for you, if you would like to see yourself living in a home in the future, is to go and get pre-qualified so you actually have a tangible list of things that you need to work on that you can decide, well, how long that will take you to work that out. And then you can be on a path that you're in control of instead of just a path that's wandering around wondering when you'll be able to make that decision. So if you'd like, I'll send you that list of three three people. Does that sound like a good idea to you? Great. Is this the best email address to use? This is the one that you registered with, or is there a different one that would be better for us to use? So however that looks for you. Are they a buyer? Are they a seller? Are they hot, active, or inactive? And have you attached them to a group? And then we've already talked about putting them on campaigns. So don't skip anybody. Become a database master. Jerry. Yes, thank you. Susan, Eric, yes. Kyle. <laughs> all of us. I love the conversation when you're interviewing with people that Ben uses. So when your database grows to a larger size, it becomes even more critical to organize that database so it can continue to be managed easily. Ben recommends that after you add names to your database, you rate them according to the following scale. A plus should be a group of 25. These are the people with whom you socialize in small settings and consider friends. You can always count on them to refer business your way. So one of the groups you create would be the A pluses. Another group would be the A's. Aim for 100 people in this group. These are people from whom you've received referrals and done business with and with whom you are frequently in communication. And then the B group is 100 to 200 people. These are people that know you by name, those with whom you are comfortable communicating, and those with whom you have lost, have not, you may have lost touch. So. That seems pretty simple. You know, they know who I am, I know who they are, but I don't talk to them all the time. And it would be easy to say, hey, you know, hey, we haven't talked for a while. And the C's is unlimited. This is the rest of the story. This is everybody else. So all of these people are your Mets, but they're broken down. Ben breaks them down even into a smaller subcategory so that he knows. And the reason you do that is because you know that you're going to do things for your sphere of people that, that, that know you, love you, and generate lots of leads for you. And that really, really intimate core group of people, I know that what Ben does is he, he rewards them with special events uh, based on which category he has them. Very similar to the Feeney. Very similar to the Feeney, yeah. Yeah. 
and this is just discussing if you have the number of people you have on it on on uh, an eight by eight in the 33 touch for one year. If you have 10 people, then you'll generate 1.7 sales and you'll increase your income by $8,800. But look what happens. So that's that's the basic, is 10 is 1.7. That's why we say that 2 and 12, because it takes that many to get to even numbers. Um, so Jerry, you've got how many METs in your database, do you think? Probably 1,000. 1,000 METs in your database? and 300 METs in your database is as high as they took the chart here. And that's gonna generate when they are consistently communicated with uh, $250,000 a year, 260 almost. It's pretty phenomenal. So it's ripe. Your database is ripe for you to be a millionaire. That's cool. So. This worksheet will allow you to do your conversion numbers. So you know how many people you have in your database and using the two and 12 ratio, divide the number of METs in your database by six. So you have 2,000 in your database divided by six mm -hmm. is what? <laughs> I don't have a, it's not an even division, 100, so. 162. 162 transactions a year. Good job. 162 transactions a year. You need to hire some people, Jerry. Yeah, with a database like that? Yeah. I know someone who really loves marketing that's with Morningside that would love to come yeah. in and, and just, they would do that. They would build that those campaigns for you. And probably a third of those are, are past buyers and sellers. Yeah. Yeah, that's so powerful. So you don't need to add it. You, you, you are sitting in gravy. You don't need to add anybody to your database. It's a matter of communicating with it. On the, the ones that I am adding, I'm more efficient with them and making sure and it's I'm, complete. You know, yeah. the quality of the so that you don't is keep repeating your first year of real estate. Yeah. Like you said before we started class today, that you've been in real estate for 20 years, mm -hmm. one year at a time. Yeah. yeah, you're in your first year of 20 years of real estate. So maybe next year you'll be able to say you're in your second year of 20 years of real estate. I'm a sophomore. That's great. Does anybody have any questions about today and what else we have in here? Because this is all we've talked about, you know, get their contact information, ask for referrals, Build a database, put your METs in there, and classify and qualify your leads. It's the whole focus of the day. So taking time to front load all these things when they get to slow down enough to be able to, to set up your system, set up your database, the front loading part is crucial. Yeah. So in, in the um, intake process of an agent, if an agent will go through religiously the 100 days, the first 100 days, concrete sequential through that. Not try to skip anything and charge into this, but, but, but have the discipline to go through the first 100 days and follow the model that's already been built in the E-Edge system, then um, everyone will be more successful. So, so the, the key, your, your assignments for tomorrow, you're gonna add 10 people to your database, and I, too, am committed to this with you. I will add 10 people to my database today, send out 10 note cards, and contact, connect with 10 people. And again, that, that information is in the KW University. Can you go to Ignite? KW University. Actually, if we close this, we should be able to... Here's the page. It's on. So it's under Education, Keller Williams University, and then you click on the first button and it opens up the Ignite, and you've got all the toolkit information down below, and up here is the downloads. So all the sessions are downloadable, and if you even want to know what the instructor version of the thing is saying and, and the little sidebar comments that it has in there, um, you can go through the instructor version as well. But it's all right there. Sweet. Any questions?
questions before we end the day? Very good. And session three tomorrow and is? And session three tomorrow is? We're going to start working on open houses. Open houses. So you need to think today about what's in, and pick your open house that you're going to do. So connect with someone at the office if you don't have an open house already. I don't have any listings. How can I get an open house? So thanks for asking that question, Jerry. Ask somebody at the office that has listings. I can sit somebody else's You can listings? absolutely sit really? somebody else's house. Absolutely. Is that unique in this company? It, it is... Uh, I don't know if it's unique yeah. in this company, but it's it's uh, it's a, a good practice. Mm -hmm. I grew my business by doing open house and creating a network of people for myself because I was in an area. I started in Chehalis and I didn't know anybody because I got married and transplanted, so I didn't know anybody in the area. So everybody every time the phone rang, I got permission to add that person to my database as part of what I was doing. I wasn't with Keller Williams at the time. And I was very purposefully, every time I answered the phone, at asking for permission to please add them to my database, and I'll send you some uh, contact, I'll send you some listings on a regular basis. I can build you an automated search. And I was doing what the Northwest NLS does automatically now, I was doing that manually. So at least once a week I was going in and I was sending out, I was researching and sending out information to everybody who I added to my database. And then at the point that it got too cumbersome to do it every week because I had too many, more people, not too many, more people in that database, because the Northwest MLS does have a database system. That was the only one available at the time. And when, when it got too cumbersome, then I started doing it alphabetically and working my way through the alphabet. So my goal was within a week, I'd work through the whole alphabet. And then it was within a month, I'd work through the whole alphabet. So Awesome. And then I got top producer and it had automated systems and I bought a website that had some automated systems. So I was dripping on people with 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 twelve directs before I ever even knew about Kelly Williams and, and automated systems for marketing myself. So strongly recommend it. It's how it's how I built web presence and anybody can do it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. So we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.